Okay, what we have here is uh, another DV9000 for repair. So what we're going to do is, uh, first we'll check out and see that the light is lit on the side. And now what we're going to do is turn it on. And we notice that it actually powers on, then powers right back off. So, uh, that right there is actually a typical error that uh, is standard with a DV9000 and needs to have a reflow. So, what we're going to do is um, break it down and then go from there and uh, work on it. All right, we're ready to clean this uh, DB9000 up. Uh, like most DB9000s uh, that we've been working on, uh, this one right here needs to actually be cleaned off. Uh, processor needs to be cleaned. But unlike most that we've seen so far, we do not have the NF430 chip here. What we have is a MCP uh, all-in-one chip. So that MCP chip is your shared video, just like the uh, Go 6150, and the low-level processor, just like the NF430. Uh, and what this does is, um, when you're working on it, or you're going to diagnose it, you turn it on, turns right back off. Uh, very, very indicative sign, because what happens is these chipsets work in a series. So what happens is uh, it's going to activate your processor, then your uh, coprocessor, discrete video, VRAM, and then your uh, low-level processor. So what happens is these all engage in a series. With only one, engage, disengage, engage, disengage. Boop, 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 boop. Turn off and on, just like that. So that's why we see the rapid succession of turning off and turning on uh, with this system unlike the other ones but that's an indicator is that it has the MCP chip uh, pretty common so what we're going to do is clean this up and then reflow it and then go from there to testing it so just like all of our other reflows we're going to reflow this one on the uh, single chipset we have to make sure that the board actually gets uh, heated up so that what happens is it doesn't cause the board to flex or bow and um, we'll go from there so what we're going to do now is uh, just like every other system we uh, crank it up and um, it's pretty complex except for this one like what was uh, stated before as just a single chipset. So we'll position this uh, light over top of it, lower it down a little bit, and uh, turn it on. Same temperatures, uh, same uh, distance. You can lower it down pretty close. Uh, same exposures, and um, Everything on it should turn out perfectly fine, just like everything before. So what we're going to do right now is just reflow it, like I said before, and then we'll go from there. Uh, since we don't have any HDMIs, we have nothing really to uh, worry about besides that actual reflow there. Another point that I'd like to make real quick. Uh, any questions that I've been asked happens to be... Uh, this Arctic Silver here compared to this Matrix, uh, the compound here. So what happens is, um, when applying this compound, you have to be very careful because it's 99.9% .9 by volume uh, silver. This is not. And what happens is, um, this is actually electrically conductive, and this is not electrically conductive. So, applying this to here, 
uh, could fry your chipset just as well as putting a copper shim on there. Whereas applying this to here will not. So you have to be careful with this one, but not careful with this one because it's not electrically sound. With that being said, you don't go and put half a tube of this on there thinking that more is going to cause it to uh, work better. What happens is you reach a certain apex level where your line goes like this on a graph. So when you're going here and then the line's coming across here, if you were to graph it out, this point is the optimum point and over here is you know where it fails and this is where it's supposedly the best but it doesn't ever chart like that so logically if you put half a tube of this on there what's going to happen is it's going to go from a uh, it's going to go from a wicking or a uh, thermal relief to an insulator and by it becoming an insulator what it does is it causes it to actually keep and retain the heat instead of passing the heat off um, so more is not better and remember that this is electrically conductive uh, in any application that you use it so you have to be extremely careful with it uh, with that being said we're going to use this up until it's gone and then move on to this one and use it we use this one on our processors and other key components like that and we use this one in other electrically uh, sensitive cases since it's non-conductive so just like all of our other uh, systems that we work on we're going to perform a burn-in for two hours on this one and um, as we can see I've actually for ease put the monitor on the floor but um, we'll see where that's starting at and it looks like it's two minutes in we'll say two minutes to be fair and um, we'll just let it do its burn in so uh, just like every other system we got to let it run for two or uh, maybe two two and a half hours just to make sure that the uh, thermal compound actually uh, doesn't bleed and doesn't develop air pockets and uh, does what it needs to do and that's going to uh, ensure that we have a properly um, developed system and it's ready to go so we'll come back here in a little while and see what happens so now we've uh, run our repair uh, burn in for about Two hours now um, just a small note about this actual burn-in uh, and what this is going to uh, do what we've done is taken this uh, heat probe here put it at the end of our fan just to show what kind of heat is actually passing out of your system so we have that at 123 degrees Fahrenheit when we first started this we noticed that the heat coming out the fan was only 112 degrees Fahrenheit. So with a proper uh, burn-in of our Arctic Silver here and our uh, other TIM here on this uh, GPU, what we see is a proper wicking of the heat off of that into the heat pipe and then pushed out actual fan to where we have it uh, showing that we've actually raised the temperature from our 112 113 to 123 so that it shows that our uh, thermal uh, conductivity here of actually pulling the heat away is actually working so since we're coming up on the uh, two hour mark here for our burn in what we're going to do is take this system and since our user has actually left a hard drive with it what we're going to do is we're going to put it together and then we're going to run a software based uh, burn in of this system and then we'll show you how we typically uh, schedule and do those 
when a user has left their hard drive with it. So we'll go from a hardware based burn in to a software based burn in test program where it simulates uh, 30 days of use and 15 minutes and then we'll go from there after that. But we need to put it back together. So that's what we're going to do. So now we've gotten the laptop to start up and it appears that everything has booted fine. Trackpad's working fine. Um, the wireless is actually working on the system uh, by the indicator of this blue light. So what we're going to do now is get this uh, system started to where it'll go to uh, our uh, program that we're going to use to um, run our burn-in. So what we're going to do now is uh, get the program installed and then go step by step to our software burn-in simulations and we'll do that here in a minute. So now we're uh, about to use uh, the program that we use for testing. It's called a burn-in test and it's uh, well it's just exactly what it is burning test and it's bypass mark and it seems to work pretty fine I've had uh, no problems out of it in the past um, and we'll see what happens here so we'll run it here install it and then after that we'll configure it to actually uh, run the test but um, the test that it runs uh, pretty much simulate everything that you'll need to um, perform a burn-in test at the software level this doesn't include uh, curing the thermal compound you'll still need to cure the thermal compound uh, as a primary step and then run this as a secondary step to see that your chipset can actually hold the VRAM and everything after that. So what we'll do is uh, let this program install and then we'll configure it and then run the test and explain a little bit after that. So as what we can see with uh, the program here is uh, what we're actually going to do is uh, six tests and the first test is CPU at 100% for 15 minutes uh, RAM at 100% for 15 minutes video at 100% and then hard drive at 100% 3D graphics and 2D graphics at 100% and what this does is it pretty much uh, performs a load on it um, then of course we'll get a uh, reading of everything after that this is just uh, telling us a configuration of the machine and then we'll get the results here and then it'll actually rate and gauge the temperature here so as we go along that's what we'll do but um, we'll start it up here and hit OK we've got our configuration set now we'll hit uh, the start for selected test hit OK and um, it's going to go through and do what it needs to do. It's going to start setting everything up and running the test. So now it's doing the load test and we'll let it run for 15 minutes and then come back after that and uh, see what the results are. So now we see that uh, our burn-in test is complete. Um, all the cycles have run, all the tests and we can actually save this as an HTML file which we do uh, for these systems but big huge past comes up nothing failed and you can actually uh, check the um, well we gotta close this out but we can do this and it'll actually give us our uh, GPU temperatures and it'll give us a scale across the whole entire time as it was doing it every 10 seconds so we can actually take and save this graph also 
and let it tell us. It will tell us the uh, minimum and maximum uh, upon load and then it will give us our actual hard drive temperature minimum and maximum upon load. So it's uh, fairly decent um, but for our burn-in test we run this it simulates what we need to simulate and then we pass the systems and so this one passed uh, we'll call it complete and that'll be that